The Orlando Magic draft Anthony Black. The Orlando Magic draft Jet Howard. And everyone feels a little bit confused, but guess what? This is exactly who the Magic are. We'll dive into why the Magic made the picks they made, why maybe they shouldn't have made the picks they made, and all the questions coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is June 23rd, 2023. My name is Philip Rossmanike. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it's the Drafter Math episode. The Orlando Magic make their picks, selecting Anthony Black and Jet Howard with their two first round picks. As expected, they traded their second round pick away for future 2032nd from the Milwaukee Bucks. We'll get into what the Magic did, why they did, who they're getting, why maybe you aren't so excited about what they did, and a whole lot more on today's episode. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. We all did lots of great stuff for the NBA draft, so check it all out. Wherever you can, just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. The immediate reaction from fans, and I imagine from national media as well to the Orlando Magic's draft has not been good. To say the least, while I I did expect the Magic to take Anthony Black and to take a shooter with that second pick, which the Magic did, this is not exactly the kind of clear picture that I expected for the Magic to have entering this season or entering the next phase of the offseason. We'll get into what the Magic have to do next and, and what they have left as we get ready for free agency next week. Today, though... The Magic have a lot of questions to answer. They don't really owe us many of these answers yet. They'll let the play do the talking, but the Magic owe uh, the Magic have a lot of questions exiting this draft. Who they picked, what they did. It's not that they picked bad players or, or necessarily made bad choices, but they made choices that leave questions. Anthony Black is a six foot five, six foot six point guard, or at least he's billed as a point guard, who defends exceptionally well. Is a better mid range jump shooter. I think people give him credit for. Is a good finisher, can set others up, but is a way below average three point shooter. That raises questions, as as it should. Even if Black was the best player on the board and. Some might argue for Cam Whitmore, who fell all the way down to 20. So I don't think that argument is particularly strong if everyone around the league was really low on him. They passed up on Taylor Hendricks. They passed up on several players to get Anthony Black to be the, the sort of centerpiece of this draft at a position that's pretty loaded already with Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony and Jalen Sucks. This draft left questions about that guard room. And the Magic hope that they've answered it, and and we'll get into that here in a minute. With the 11th pick, the Magic got the shooter that we all knew they needed. I sat here for the last month and a half, two months, and said, I do not care if it's by draft pick. I do not care if it's by trade. I want the Magic to leave draft night. I want the Magic to sit here on Friday, June 23rd, and say, hey, we have a shooter. The Magic accomplished that goal. The very basic thing I wanted them to accomplish, they did. It just wasn't the shooter any of us thought it would be. While a lot of us had Grady Dick and Jordan Hawkins, both drafted in the first round, or even Kobe Bufkin at the end, 
Jet Howard emerged as the shooter the Magic targeted. A six foot six, six foot seven swing player uh, who has good size, does not have a defensive reputation, although both he and the Magic said they believed he could grow into becoming a better defender. They believed that the ankle, an ankle injury that he suffered uh, and played through at Michigan really slowed him down and hid some of the things that he is good at. He is a fantastic shooter. One of the best shooters in this draft. Don't get it wrong. The Magic, you might decide Grady Dick's the best shooter in this draft. The Magic took care of that shooting. They got a shooting specialist. Jet Howard can, he can just make shots, period. He will get hot. He will make a bunch of shots. That is what he is good at. The Magic took care of this need. But it wasn't the guy we expected, where... A lot of mock drafts had him going in the late teens, early 20s, or big boards had him in that range as well. Taking him at 11 felt like a reach. And this is the important point to make. We don't know, A, what information other teams had or or what teams had on these guys. We don't know exactly how they evaluated these players. Ultimately, when you see a draft grades post, when you see uh, our perceptions of the draft, we are thinking about the player compared to our expectations, compared to what our list. Would I have taken Grady Dick over Jet Howard? Yeah, I probably would have. Do I think Jet Howard is necessarily a bad pick in that the Magic were going after shooting? No. And for those that say, well, the Magic could have traded down to get him, maybe that deal wasn't there. Maybe the NBA does rate Jet Howard as a better shooter than Grady Dick. And this was the only place the Magic could get him. That is a reality too. And the fact of the matter is that these NBA people are usually a little bit smarter on this stuff than we are. That's not to say that we can completely give the magic pass because we are looking at a team now that has a lot of questions. They have a very crowded guard room. They have a very, very crowded guard room. And Jed Hart only asks that even if he can play a little bit of three and give the magic some, some forward depth. At the end of the day... You don't win the draft on draft night or the night after the draft. As as frustrated as fans might be for not taking their player or the player they believed in or being trade happy and believing that trades are really that easy to accomplish. There there are a lot of draft pick trades done, but nothing major uh, outside of the Chris Paul trade on Thursday. Nothing crazy. Um, But... But the Magic, at the end of the day, seem to have accomplished the goals they wanted to accomplish. They got a high IQ, versatile wing player. They got a shooter. And whatever questions that leaves were questions the Magic were prepared to ask themselves throughout the course of the season. Now, again, the next question will be, did the Magic maximize this opportunity with two lottery picks, perhaps for the last time? Did the Magic maximize their opportunities? Is Anthony Black going to be a guard that the Magic can rely on in the future? Is Jet Howard going to be able to get on the court immediately? Those are fair questions to ask. And as Jeff Bowman has said repeatedly this offseason, we're at a point where we're not gifting rookies minutes. It is not guaranteed that these guys are going to be regular parts of the rotation. And if they can't, become a regular part of the rotation, then yeah, maybe these draft picks are a bust. There isn't a clear path for these players to get, to to assure themselves a spot beyond what we'll talk about next. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you want to say about who the Magic drafted, the one thing you can say is the Magic stayed true to their form. They stay true to the principles they believe in, to the team they want to build. At the end of the day, the Orlando Magic were the Orlando Magic and invested in the qualities they believe are important. We'll get into that bigger picture item and how Anthony Black and Jet Howard fit into that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends, over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs was such an awesome sponsor. 
for our NBA draft coverage here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm a big fan of Bird Dogs. I was a big fan of Bird Dogs before they started sponsoring the podcast. I got a couple khakis from them. Long long pants, not shorts for, for, for that, for that that really feel comfortable and comfortable enough to wear at work and comfortable enough to wear casually. They just look really, really nice. They have that nice stretch fabric that, that makes it feel and look like cat, like a khaki, like a nice pant pants, but you can also go out like on the golf course and play on them and it'll whip up all that moisture and sweat and keep you nice and cool. The, the shorts are just as good too. They have the nice, uh, they're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and give you that truly sculpted look. They do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way way better. Go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. Check out all the great items that they have, whether it's the, the no liner or liner uh, pants. I actually wore the liners the other way, other day. Very, very interesting concept. I actually enjoyed it. That's birddogs.com slash lockdown NBA for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. If you've listened to my draft coverage throughout the course uh, of the last month, um, you've heard me say several things over and over again. Um, and, and, and they bear repeating today because I because I think a lot of the criticisms that people have of what the Magic did kind of forget some of these things. Um, I'm a big believer that these big boards, like the big board that I publish, that's my opinion. It's not based on a full full set of information, but that's my opinion. And look, I like to be right, but I'm not afraid to be wrong or I'm not afraid to have my opinion challenged, especially by people who probably know a little bit more than I do. And so I've always said, if you have your guy, go get him. It doesn't matter where everyone else thinks you should take him. It doesn't matter that everyone else thinks that Jed Howard should have been the 20th pick. If there was no trade to get down to 20 to ensure that you get your guy, take him, get him, make sure you get your player, identify your player, go get him. Even if you have to trade up to do so, maybe magic could have or should have done that, but I'm, I'm still very skeptical of it. The, the magic really, I think held to this principle in, in the draft picks they made Thursday night. At the end of the day, Orlando was looking for a very specific type of player and, and really for a specific type of person. They're looking for versatility. And it's not just about length and wingspan and all that and all those measurables. It's skill versatility. Um, I was talking to Kobe, Kobe Price about this uh, a, a, after the draft. We were kind of discussing uh, you know, whether the Magic really are obsessed with long boys. They are. But to me, it's it's for this Magic team, it's not about positional length or positional versatility, it's skill versatility. The Magic, Jeff Weltman said it very plainly that he does not see the Magic as having a point guard logjam because Anthony Black can play the three. They can play Markel Cole and Anthony Black or Jalen Cole and Anthony Black all together at the same time. That's positional versatility because Black can cover all three of those wing positions and, and do it well. And that's what makes him special. His defense is what makes him special. He is a determined fighter. And that's something the Magic value. That's something the Magic want. Jed Howard is very much the same way. Playing through an ankle injury. A guy who is competitive and wants to win. These are values the Magic really care about. And, and yes, he is big as well for, for the type of shooter that he is. Orlando has a vision for what they're trying to accomplish. And, you know, Paolo Bancaro tweeted after tweeted during the draft, I see the vision. The Magic truly do have a vision for who they want to be. And they're trying to collect players as imperfect as some of them might be. And yes, I, I, I get all the criticisms of these players as imperfect as some of these players might be to fulfill that vision. And that is to have essentially five switchable positionless players. They, they truly want to be able to throw their five best players on the floor and see where the chips fall. That means having size and length for sure. That means having multiple ball handlers. That ha means having multiple playmakers. That means being able to spread the floor with shooting to create off drives, but to have those plays come from inversions, to have Markel set a screen for Paolo, to have 
Anthony Black at the three driving, driving and pushing the ball up the court off of a rebound. He's a very good rebounder for his, for his size, by the way. The Magic want to be able to do all of this, to be very interchangeable, to have everyone on the same page, to have the IQ to be able to play at the highest levels. At the end of the day, when you look at who the Magic are drafting and what they're focusing on, this is at the center of it all. This is the true thing they're looking for. And so in this draft, yes, they filled the need with Jet Howard, and, and, and we can debate some of that, but they believe Jet Howard can be a better defender than Grady Dick. And if that's the case, they made the right call. Jordan Hawkins maybe lacks the uh, skill versatility that the Magic are looking for, the positional versatility the Magic are looking for. So they made this call. Anthony Black is the definition of versatility with the number of different players he can defend, with his ability to just get in the lane and create for others, even if the shooting and scoring is not all the way there. This is who the Magic want to be. And so on that front, if you want to believe the Magic and what they say about these players, and again, we'll see how it all plays out in October. On that front, that is what the Magic were looking for Thursday night. The Magic were looking for players who fit their personality, who fit their size profile, their skill profile, that fit the team they want to be. That's what the Magic did Thursday night. That's where the Magic attacked, and that's who the Magic added. Now, again, we will see whether those gambles, those bets pay off. We will see if the Magic ultimately made the correct decision, and, and there's no guarantee at the end of the day that they did. That's the true scary part, is the Magic took a gamble here on Anthony Black and believing that his shooting would come around enough. Because I don't know how many tweets that I got, especially with the hair, trying to say, oh, they drafted another Alfred Payton. Maybe they did. I'm not here to tell you that that's not impossible, that that is what happened here tonight or what happened here Thursday night. But they also picked someone that they believe is a fierce competitor that loves to play defense. He said as much. He loves to play defense. He wants to stop the other the other team's best score. And if the rest of those skills come into place, and Anthony Black is a heck of a pick. On the other side, Jet Howard is a fantastic three-point shooter. I cannot speak enough about how fantastic of a three-point shooter that Jet Howard is. He really is good. And if that's the skill that the Magic needed to fill, that's the, that's the skill the Magic took care of. What we saw Thursday night was the Magic drafting true to form, doing almost exactly what we would expect. Maybe not quite the player that we imagined, but they got the skills they needed. They focused on the things we thought they would focus on, and they took care of their business. Whether you want to say the Magic had a good draft or a bad draft, that's really up to you. But we will talk a little bit more about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. Uh, Game Time, it, it's it's such a good app. I, I really, I, I'm getting ready. I'm going to buy my tickets to SmackDown here in a month over at the Amway Center, same night as the, the League's Cup game for Orlando City. Busy, busy weekend here in Orlando as well uh, With for the love of the game happening on Friday. If you need last-minute tickets to any of these events that are coming on, because I know I'm going to need last-minute tickets, you've got to check out the Game Time app. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, and it really isn't with Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have at the event. You will love Game Time because they got flash deals for last-minute tickets, Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. And they got 3D views of your seats. So you know exactly what it's going to look like where you are sitting. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. 
Buy tickets in a matter of seconds to taps in your set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. So you now have to dig through your email and customer services. Honestly, so friendly and helpful. They helped me out on a previous purchase I had struggling with the MLB uh, ballpark app. They took care of me, made sure I had my tickets on my phone, easily accessible so I could get into the game. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first order for your first purchase. Excuse me. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Today's podcast also brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. We love Prize Picks because it is it is the best game. It's honestly the best game out there. Some of those other games that you would do um, are really confusing. They have cap- weird scoring rules. They have um, they have they have weird scoring rules. They have weird salary cap rules. And frankly, you're just entering these giant pools where you're just lucky to get your money back. Well, Prize Picks is completely different. It puts you in complete control of your daily fantasy sports experience. How the game works is you pick two to six players, and if they go on to score more or less than their Prize Picks projections. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, including NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, and so much more when they're in season. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently available and operational in there are more than 30 states, including here in Florida, as well as Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. So, all of you are going to put me on the spot. All of you are going to act, make me say, did the Magic do a good job on draft night? Did the Magic accomplish the things that they needed to accomplish and, and make the progress they needed to make, to make? I will say this. I think the Magic were always in a tricky spot in this draft. A lot of the players that have been taken in the top 10 were players that were seriously flawed and, and flawed in ways that hurt the Magic. I have my reservations. I, I like Anthony Black a lot. I think he could be a really good player. I think he'll be a really good player for the Magic. But I have my reservations about him because of that poor shooting. Can he get the shooting to a respectable level? And frankly, can the Magic afford to wait it out with him to get there? Can they afford to play him significant minutes to get him there? You could ask that about a lot of picks. It could have been Osar Thompson, who I really liked. Um, it could have been about Jairus Walker. There are a lot of players, you know, even a case in Wallace or Kobe Bufkin. There were a lot of players that the Magic could have taken here that would have left a lot of these questions. And if they took a Taylor Hendricks, everyone would be criticizing the Magic for reaching for Taylor Hendricks. So did the Magic minimize their risk exposure? Honestly, no. Anthony Black could bust. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that he couldn't. He's not the greatest playmaker. He's a good playmaker. The shot has a long, long way to go. And so I do wonder, is that the best pick? Now, on a talent basis, I think that is absolutely one of the – it was either him or Whitmore, um, just purely based on talent. Beyond – before we get to the injury history and all that stuff, which probably caused Whitmore to tumble, um, just based on talent – the Magic did a really good job at six. Do I think Anthony Black is the perfect fit? No, because now we do have a lot of questions. Will the Magic be open to trading Markel Fultz or Cole Anthony? Do the Mag- Are the Magic going to bring one or both back? Are those trade rumors really ready to open up? Is Jalen Suggs on the table? I don't think these are immediate questions that need to be answered, but it's sitting there. Now we know where the pressure point on this roster is for the Magic to make a trade if the opportunity comes around. It's at that guard spot. It's one of those three players that I just mentioned. If the Magic truly believe in Anthony Black and if Black proves himself to be that player. Overall, if I had to give a letter grade, which is just a nice little conceit, 
I would give Anthony Black, a, I would give the Magic a B for their sixth pick. I think they took talent, which always wins and always matters, but they left themselves exposed to potentially getting nothing out of the pick or getting very, very little out of this pick. Um, so a B, I think, is fair. On the Jed Howard pick, it honestly depends on whether Jed Howard can defend. I had Jed Howard way off my board because I, I, didn't, I, I didn't even do a draft profile on for Orlando Magic Daily. That will be coming Friday afternoon. Um, I didn't even bother with that because I didn't think he would be an option for the Magic just because of where he was falling in mock drafts or he was falling on big boards and because his defense was really, really rough. Yes, he could shoot the lights out of the ball, but it didn't seem like he fit the Magic's defensive mentality. You know, I talked about how the Magic stayed true to their form, stayed true to the things that they like. They picked their type in, in a lot of ways, except Jet Howard is not a good defender or was not a good defender at Michigan. Now, some of that might have been due to the ankle injury that he was playing through. We can give him a little bit of a pass for that. But this kid is not known for his defense. He's not overly long. Although he is big, he is tall, and, and he's got, got a positive wingspan. Um, he's not overly long. He is not super committed on defense. And again, it may have been the injuries, but the Wolverines were better with him on the bench than he was on the floor. He was the coach's son. And, you know, I don't think we want to say he got favorable treatment, but he's because he's good enough to be in the NBA, obviously. But there are a lot of questions about him and whether he can get to that point. Now, I think Grady Dick, I think Grady Dick was the option if the match were going for a shooter. I, I'm not going to lie there. Um, I don't know if I'm ready to say I would take Dick. I, I certainly would take Grady Dick over Jed Howard here. Um, so I am ready to say that. So I would give this Magic's 11th pick a C plus. At the end of the day, the Magic still got their shooter. So I, I can't be too upset. Um, they did exactly what I wanted them to do on draft night. They got their shooter. Is it the shooter I thought they would get? No. But we will see if Jed Howard can round himself into form and be a more positive contributor to the team. Perhaps being away from Michigan, being away from the college environment where everyone's still trying to feel each other out and figure out who the alpha is, knowing that he has Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, those guys are better than he is. If he doesn't understand that, that's a problem. But maybe playing off those guys will limit some of the negative impacts that we saw from him at Michigan and get him to lock in a little bit more on the defensive and certainly being in, I think, the Magic's ecosystem is going to help with that too. But we will see how it all comes together because at the end of the day, grading a draft the night after the draft is just bad. It's silly. It's stupid. I know I did it. It gets hits. Whatever. It's bad. It's silly. It's stupid. At the end of the day, we will judge this draft three, four, five years down the road and see exactly what the Magic got out of these picks. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in. Hit my Google, my Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places on the podcast to your podcast enable listening to us. So lay us on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. I want to thank you again for listening to today's episode, for following along with us throughout the whole draft process. It's been a lot of fun. It's still a good night for Magic fans. Two new exciting players. Support them as much as you can. They don't deserve all your doubt and hate. We'll see what they can do. Give them the chance. I'm always big on this. Give people the chance to succeed or fail. Give them the chance before you before you just throw them into the trash heap. These kids are very, very good. They have the potential to hit. They have the potential to be very good players and important players for this Magic. Give them their chance to show us exactly what they can do. I'm, I'm excited to see them both play. Uh, I, I, I Look. Prove me wrong to some of the doubts that I had here. Please, please prove me wrong. If you're part of my everyday crew, we will hear once again from Anthony Black and Jed Howard on Friday. We'll recap that on Monday's episode of Locked on Magic. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Phil Prosperin-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.